welcome in today's class we will talk about ncert class 11th india geography and we would be focusing on physical geography now let's first understand the demarcation that has been given in the ncert so ncert 11th and 12th you have 11th which focuses on physical geography divided into two parts part 1 focusing on the world physical geography and part 2 focusing on india physical geography the world physical geography we have already covered we are on the physical geography of india Class 12's geography focuses on human geography. Uh, again, divided into two parts. So, part one is the world human uh, geography, which we have already covered, and part two is the India human geography that we will be covering after we cover the physical geography of India. Now, this is a very introductory lecture where we focus on the physical geography of India. The extent from north to south and the east to west have been mentioned. Now, if you look onto the map of India, you have Gujarat in the westernmost part, followed by Arunachal Pradesh in the easternmost part. You have Jammu Kashmir in the north, followed by uh, Kerala in the south. And these are the limits that are being extended from the north to south that are seen. Also. we have a unique uh, time zone which is the indian standard time now indian standard time is unique by itself because you have 5 and 30 minutes uh, 5 hours and 30 minutes that it is ahead of the greenwich meridian time india as a country does not have multiple time zones and that is one of the unique characteristics although if we look from gujarat to arunachal pradesh there is a difference of 2 hours if it talk in terms of time zone but throughout india we focus on a unified time zone which is known as the ist or the indian standard time zone and which is 5 and 1/2 hours ahead of the greenwich mean time so the northern and the southern extents are there so that's one of the important aspects that are uh, that has to be covered now as we already talked about the time zone in india the next is the vagaries that occur across the country so across the country we say india is a land of diverse phenomena you have numerous things that are prevalent in the country so you have desert in the parts of rajasthan in the parts of meghalaya you have mainstorm which is the region which has highest rainfall or the wettest place on earth so that's the kind of diversity that we see from west to east and also from north to south you have a huge lot of diversity that is seen if we look on to the map of india the southern part of the india usually we say lie in the tropical belt and the northern part of india above 18 degree isotherm is a region which lies in the subtropical belt the variation of 30 degrees is taken uh, to understand the time hour variation in india now india in terms of the area is the seventh largest in the world however in terms of population india stands second largest but this term of population we would understand more in the classes on human geography right now in physical geography talking about the aerial and the spatial extent we have india as the seventh largest nation coming on uh, to the next aspect that we have is the physiography of india a quick introduction here the detailed physiography we would talk about in the next chapter now when we say physiography of india you have the rivers that run north to south so in the north you have the ganga river which is one of the major rivers and then you have brahmaputra ganga and brahmaputra meet together to form the sundarban deltas in the north you have the hilly terrains of himalayas you have the lower himalaya middle himalaya upper himalaya and then the trans himalaya mount everest which is the highest peak lies in nepal and then in india you have uh, numerous other peaks like k2 uh, kanchenjunga so those are the major peaks that we say fall in the indian territory in the northeast you have the purvanchal hills that are there in the region of meghalaya itself you have three major hills which are garo khasi and jayantia similarly in the parts of desert area you have marusthali that is uh, that it is called as so you have the sand and the stony desert that is seen across the globe so different parts of desert in the different parts of the world that is seen in india the dry desert or the uh, warm desert is what is the thar desert the cold desert is in the leh ladakh area so within the country itself you have both the cold desert and the warm desert conditions that are seen 
you have numerous passes that connected to other countries so you have bomdila pass shiplika pass uh, nathula pass so those are some of the major passes that are seen which connect india to the neighboring countries similarly if we call, talk about the coastline only considering the mainland you have 6100 kilometers of coastline running from the regions of gujarat till the regions of uh, west bengal however if we include the island territories of andaman and nicobar and lakshadweep lakshadweep in the arabian sea andaman and nicobar in the bay of bengal so these two if they are included the coastline extends to 5000 uh, 7517 kilometers and this is the total coastline of the indian mainland along with the island regions then we do have the neighbors and now most of the neighbors are on the land side so you have the country of pakistan a little margin with the afghanistan china of course nepal bhutan myanmar bangladesh so those are the neighboring countries that we uh, say are on the mainland but uh, crossing the borders you have uh, sri lanka as one of the Uh, major countries now sri lanka is separated from india through gulf of mannar and park street what is the difference between a street and a gulf is important street i can say is a water channel that connects two water bodies so here you have the indian ocean the bay of bengal and the arabian sea and that's connected through the uh, palk is uh, palk street that is there then you have gulf of mannar so gulf of mannar is a land with a very <coughs> is a region surrounded by the land with a very narrow opening that is seen and that is what is gulf so uh, there is as i said a difference between the gulf and a strait i repeat again so strait is a water body that connects the two bigger water bodies and gulf is surrounded by the land with a narrow mouth opening that is seen <clears throat> so those were uh, some of the key uh, parts under the differences between the gulf and the strait very important concept and then a very new portal very important for your examination perspective as well you have a school bhuvan school bhuvan is a portal which provides map based learning bringing in awareness among the students about the natural resources of the country about the environment and the sustainable development that is seen now this is a joint initiative of uh, isro and nrsc based on the recent ncert syllabus so school bhuvan has been applicable to most of the schools across india to bring in awareness among the people for a map based learning and a much more visual understanding of the concept so this was a very basic introduction each of the things that we have discussed now we would be covering those chapter by chapter so the next chapter would be the physiography of the country stay tuned for many more updates in geography have a wonderful day ahead